APV, Adjusted Present Value Method. The Adjusted Present Value Method is a valuation method to determine the levered value of an investment by first calculating its unlevered value and then adding the value of the interest tax shield. The first step is to calculate the value of the free cash flows using the project's cost of capital as if it were financed without leverage. For a firm that maintains a target leverage ratio, it can be estimated as the weighted average cost of capital computed without taking into account taxes, the pre-tax WAC. We then value the interest tax shield separately. R sub U is the percent of equity times the required return on equity plus the percent of debt times the interest rate on debt. The firm's unlevered cost of capital equals its pre-tax WAC because it represents the investor's required return for holding the entire firm, equity and debt. This argument relies on the assumption that the overall risk of the firm is independent of the choice of leverage. When a firm tar adjusts its debt proportionally to its project value or its cash flows, this is our target. We will use the textbook example of AVCO which is financed 50% with equity and 50% with debt, where the required return on equity is 10% and the interest rate on debt is 6%. Hence, its unlevered cost of capital will be 8%, which is less than its equity cost of capital, which includes the financial risk of leverage, but greater than its WAC of seven and a quarter, which incorporated the tax benefit of leverage. We assume that a project generates annual free cash flow of $21 million in perpetuity, thus the value of the project's free cash flows is $69.55 million, as you can see on the next slide. That value of $69.55 million is the value of the unlevered project and does not include the value of the tax shield provided by the interest payments on the debt. Interest paid in year T is the interest rate on the debt multiplied the debt in the, in the previous year. The interest tax shield is equal to the interest paid on the debt multiplied by the corporate tax rate. The table on the next slide shows the interest tax shield calculations. Our next step is to find the present value of the interest tax shield. Uh, when they maintain a target leverage ratio, the future tax shields have similar risk to the project's cash flows, so they should be discounted at the project's unlevered cost of capital, 8% here, giving us a value of $1.18 million. So the total value of the project with leverage is the sum of the value of the interest tax shield and the value of the unlevered project. 69.55 plus 1.18 is 70.73 million. Assume the project costs 29 million, then the NPV of the project is 41.73 million. 70.73 minus 29 equals 41.73, the exact value found by the WAC approach in the textbook in section 18.2. So to summarize, the APV method determined the investment's value without leverage, determined the present value of the interest tax shield, first determine the expected interest tax shield, then discount the interest tax shield, add the unlevered value to the present value of the interest tax shield to determine the value of the investment with leverage. The APV method has some advantages. It can be easier to apply than the WAC method when the firm does not maintain a constant debt equity ratio, and it also explicitly values market imperfections and therefore allows managers to ensure their contribution to value. 
You have another example here, valuing an acquisition where there's some growth. Again, with AVCO, uh, the acquisition will contribute 4.25 million in free cash for the first year, grow by 3% per year for thereafter. The acquisition cost of 80 million will be financed with 50 million in new debt initially. You will use the APV method, assuming AFCO will maintain a constant debt equity ratio for the acquisition. First, we compute the value of the firm without leverage using the unlevered cost of capital of 8%. Value of the unlevered firm is 4.25 divided by the 8% uh, RU minus the 3% growth or 85 million. Now they're adding 50 million initially in debt at a 6% interest rate. The interest expense in the first year is 3 million. At a 25% tax rate, the tax yield is 0.75 million. Because the value of the acquisition is growing at 3%, we assume the amount of the debt will add, therefore the tax shield will grow at the same rate. The present value of the interest tax shield works out to be 15 million. So the value of the firm with the acquisition with leverage is given by the APV of 100 million. Because AFCO will pay 80 million for the acquisition, the APV method implies an NPV of 100 minus 80 or 20 million. For without the benefit of the interest tax shield, the NPV would be only 5 million. So we can easily extend the method to include other market imperfections. If you're interested, look at section 18.7 in the textbook. So now you have seen the APV method which you can use for valuing an acquisition or a project.